You're listening to Generic In Talkers, a Final Fantasy XIV podcast. And now, your hosts, Jen and Eric. Welcome to another episode of Generic In Talkers. Let me switch this screen real quick. There we go. Uh, I'm Generic Eric, and with me as always is my beautiful wife, Generic Jen. Hello, hello. I did the introduction correctly this time. Yeah, everybody's Everybody in chat saying, yay, it worked. <laughs> Okay, guys, you're gonna let me freaking live that last time down when it was an accident. Anyway, uh, what joining us last time? last time it was like we it started and then we were like chatting for like a few minutes or a few seconds or whatever. Oh, and it was understand. muted. Yeah, uh, joining us today is Shanty Man Gaming. What's up, what? Shanty? Hey, glad to be here. Uh, glad to have you. So um, we are this week. In uh, Final Fantasy XIV, Jin and I have been doing some MSQ. Um, we pretty much only do, like we said, we only do MSQ on stream, so we're it's going kind of slow. Uh, we're getting through Inwalker. Um, but, of course, because our podcasts for right now are spoiler-free, Inwalker spoiler-free, we're not going to talk specifically about what's happening. Um, but we have been, uh, we've, it's been getting spicy. Yeah, It's this, definitely gotten spicy. It's, it's getting good. Spicy. We're, we're having a good time. Uh, but what about you, Shanty? So you're a level 73 summoner, so you're not even in Inwalker right now. Nope, I'm still currently in 5.0. Uh, okay, all right. Yeah. All right, nice. Bet- between Q Savage and having ridiculous amounts of overtime at the day job, I just didn't take any hours in in December. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So uh, so what have you been working on, I guess, then uh, currently in, in Shadowbringers? Um, I just recently got into Il Meg, and I'm looking forward to some of the side quests with Orianje. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the, with having to read Orianje. That's one of the that's Orianje's. one of the biggest problems I have with Orianje as a character is that I try to voice act and also read all of the lines whenever we're streaming. So it makes it so difficult for me to be like, uh, "Dost thou hither then thine?" And I'm just like, then "Come thy on, thou. Yeah. use use some regular speak, please." Um, but yeah, no, Ilmeg is a Ilmeg is a great zone. Um, is Ilmeg Lahi? No, that's Rectika. You've been to you've already been to Rectika, right? No, no. Oh, you I haven't gotten there uh, yet? No. Oh, okay. So Ilmeg Ilmeg is the Pixies. Yes, yeah. Oh, Ilmeg, right, Ilmeg, right, is, right. Ilmeg is the Pixies. Ilmeg is the giant fairy castle with wings. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The really, really pretty place that we always yes. go to for screenshots. Oh yeah, that's that uh, that is true. It is very nice. Um, yeah, so, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Um, you, so do you stream often? How often do you stream? Um, it'll be more often in the coming months. Uh, hopefully overtime dies down so I can actually start sticking to a schedule, but okay. I, I've been working 60 plus hours a week, so oh. it's, uh, not been realistic to try to add streaming on top of that, yeah, but I'm uh, getting back into the habit. Okay, so uh, let me just do this uh, command for chat real quick. If you guys want to uh, give Shanty a follow, uh, there's a link in chat. Um, so, Shanty, tell us a little bit about what is your history with Final Fantasy games in general, just as a franchise, not necessarily 14 specifically. Okay, um, I was introduced to Final Fantasy via 7 during high school, like... Uh, my adoptive family, my adoptive brother, he introduced me to it. Said, "This mm-hmm. is so much better than what you're playing." Because at the time, <laughs> I was <laughs> at the time I was mostly playing sports games, so yeah. he wasn't wrong. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's all right. It's so funny because I I always have this like kind of not necessarily love hate relationship, but when people are just like, "Oh yeah, I like video games," I always am just like, "Okay, but do you like video games or do you like sports games?" Because it's it seems like sports games don't necessarily they at least in the past they didn't really fit into be like you like video games or you like sports games are two separate things um because i feel like sports games appeal to a wider variety a wider audience mm-hmm. because sports are such a big thing you know yeah. so even people who aren't you know going to go to pack south and that kind of stuff will sit there and play hours and hours of i don't know what a recent fifa or something i didn't know <laughs> madden is the only sports madden fifa or the, do they still make madden games Yes, annually. <laughs> really? Wow. Uh, so then you started playing, you played Final Fantasy VII as your first Final Fantasy game? Yes, and then I started looking at some of the other ones. Um, and unfortunately, I waited until they started hitting the DS for, like, the, you know, the pixel games. Yeah. But, oh my god, Final Fantasy VI. 
Yeah, nice. that's it's my favorite one. <laughs> it, it's in my top three, and um, it's definitely in my top two of the numbered games. Uh-huh. However, and this is going to be a spicy take, um, Final Fantasy Tactics Advance is probably my personal yeah. top Final Fantasy title. I don't think that that's not that's not overly controversial because Final Fantasy Tactics is a great it's a great franchise and I enjoyed the shit out of Advance. I, I prefer Tactics before Advance, but I still really liked Advance. So I don't think it's I don't think it's that crazy of a take. But yeah, it's 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 definitely it's usually not when I talk to people, usually not one of their like when you say Final Fantasy, you're like, What's your top Final Fantasy game? And it's usually one of the numbered ones. Uh Mine, of course, being six, and I wish I can get Jen to sit through one of the Final Fantasy games, but she, she won't do it. <laughs> Is it all like the turn-based stuff? It's it's well, no. See, at Final Fantasy twelve and beyond that, they changed it so it was more, um, it was more of like the like Final Fantasy fourteen kind of, in a sense. But if you watch me play the the Final Fantasy seven remake, like that kind of combat. But I, yeah, I just I don't think that you would. I think that you would I was probably making faces uh, for the podcast people. I was kind of making that like meh, you, meh. I think that you would enjoy the story, but I just don't really think that you would like the gameplay and stuff. Um, so uh, how did you then? How did you get into Final Fantasy fourteen? Um, so last year I was mostly into WoW, and I started exploring fourteen before. All of the ABK stuff because mm-hmm. early in the year I had kidney stones. Okay. And uh, that was a very rough month, and I just I couldn't keep up with WoW at all at that point. Yeah. So you know you hear oh the slower GCD. Yeah. yeah. Especially at the lower levels, and that worked well for me while I was basically hopped up on painkillers for a month. <laughs> oh. Yeah. That that yeah that makes sense. And so. We we kind of did. I mean, we we played in Heaven's Word and then kind of came back to it right before all of the ABK stuff as well. Um, so you started playing. So you're saying you said before you played World of Warcraft. How long did you play WoW? Um, on and off since BC. Okay, same. Yeah, that was me. Jen played since vanilla, but yeah, that that's the same as me. Uh, and so were did you find there that there was a a big learning curve when you came to Final Fantasy from World of Warcraft, or did you feel like it was pretty easy to get into? Um, I play multiple MMOs now, and honestly, it was one of the easier learning curves because it's okay. still tab targeting. It's still right. basically you're still going to have the same yeah button layout essentially. So it's just a matter of learning that oh, you actually have to weave stuff in on the OG CD. Yeah, and then also there's a lot more uh, footwork in Final Fantasy just because of the way that uh, stuff is telegraphed on the ground, and it's not something that you do in a lot of in World of Warcraft, at least, there's a lot of just don't stand in the shit, and that's about it. Um, puddles and all that kind of shit. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, uh, you mentioned first, you mentioned MMOs. What are what are some of the other MMOs that yeah. uh, that you've played? Um, in the past year, I have started Elder Scrolls Online. Um, okay. Well, restarted because I played for about five minutes, and then I remembered <laughs> I had a grudge against Elder Scrolls. <laughs> oh no! Uh, okay. Well, when you play 113 hours of Oblivion and then get glitched into a cave with no way out. Oh, that sucks. So, so <laughs> it, it, it leaves a sour taste in your mouth. Yeah, I would imagine. Wow. Um, in addition to that, I've also started Guild Wars 2. I've gone back and started in uh, Lord of the Rings Online. Oh, nice. Star Wars The Old Republic. I would... uh, there's, a, there's a reason that in my Twitter bio it says Variety MMO Streamer. <laughs> yeah. There you go. I was dabbling in Star Wars recently. And then stuff happened, and I've got busy, so I don't really have a lot of time to game outside of stream anymore. But yeah, I was actually uh, I was I was playing Star Wars: The Old Republic and enjoying the shit out of it, man. Like it was it was it's a lot of fun. I don't know. I we hadn't played it since launch, so uh, I was having a really good time. But me and uh, my friend Retro were playing it together but he also got busy so it kind of sucks because it's like he was like yeah you should level a character and play with me but he was also really low level so i had leveled past him really fast so he was just like okay wait a minute i needed to slow down no oh. um the mmo feel is old this time yeah for real <laughs> that's why like with me and jen since we play pretty much every mmo that we play would we ever dabble in we play them together uh 
we level together. So it's always it's it's one of those things where there was a time in in Final Fantasy during Stormblood where I wanted to play and Jin didn't. And I was like, well, are you okay with me leveling into Stormblood and like actually level my character without you? And she was like, yeah, it's I was fine. okay until I decided to start playing again. And, and then I was, I was like, like, man, what am I? How am I, I got to do this by myself? What the and then hell? I had to sit there and I'm like, well, I can't do anything <laughs> because I have to wait for Jen. I yeah. can't progress through the MSQ. So I had to like level alts and stuff. That's when I started leveling my Dark Knight because I was waiting for Jen to catch up with me in, in, in uh, Stormblood. Um, also, I love your shirt, by the way. And for for the for the podcast listeners uh, or anybody who can't actually see a shirt, uh, it says "Get a job." Bless you, Jen. It says "Get a job," and it has a, a picture of like the uh, all of the class icons from Final Fantasy. That's I like great. that. That's great. Thank you. I was. Uh, I do take it personally though, because I don't have a job. So. Um... <laughs> I actually have a sister to this shirt that says "Get Crafty" with all the disciples of hand. In oh, nice! Oh, I like that. It's <laughs> awesome. Um, so yeah, th- so w- with World of Warcraft, you said you've been playing on and off. Um, what did you play in the like? What 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 class did you play in WoW? <coughs> um, for the longest time, it was Assassination Rogue, and then uh, around BFA, I decided to change it up, both faction wise and. Uh, class-wise, and I ended up rolling an alliance character for the first time. Good, good. <laughs> and, uh, Goody. and that was an affliction lock, which is actually why I went summoner. Oh, see, that was going to be my question, is that if your class in World of Warcraft influenced the class that you ended up playing in Final Fantasy. Which it did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is really cool. And, 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 and then they pulled the rug out from under me and completely changed Summoner. Yeah, that's very true. I was about to say, it's cool because Summoner got a lot of changes that are, you know, pretty awesome. But also at the same time, you know, you're just like, oh, okay, I guess that I've got to relearn this. <laughs> but I think it, that's that's pretty cool. So it's it's funny because thinking about it, it's not really something I ever really paid attention to. Jin's World of Warcraft, do, in any MMO, Jin always plays a healer. Yeah, that's me. Hi, healer. So... If you were to guess what Jin played in 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 World of Warcraft, knowing that she in Final Fantasy fourteen she plays a white mage, what did what do you what do you think she would have played in WoW? I would say probably Holy Priest. Yep, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's pretty much it's it's yep. pretty easy to guess. Yep. Like, yep. <laughs> <clears throat> so that is definitely it's definitely something that was you know you could tell that it was influenced. However, I'm playing a ninja and I mained a Death Knight. No, you played a rogue before. I played. I did not. I played a rogue for one expansion. That's one expansion. That's one expansion. I played. That's that's two whole years. That's still the whole rest of the time. The whole other. I don't know what ten ten to twelve years. I played World of Warcraft. I was a warrior and a death knight. So they were melee. You played a death knight just as much as you played a rogue. That's true. But warrior though, I played a warrior all the other time. I got him. Still, no, you didn't. I played a warrior more. Eric, cutie patootie. Nah. So, um, <laughs> if you're not familiar with what we're talking about, you should watch our stream on twitch.tv slash generic live and see the the antics that go on there. Um, so, yeah, like, so it actually, I don't know, it was kind of weird because I went, I went ninja. I guess I was thinking that, that I really enjoyed Rogue in, in WoW, so I went ninja, or I went Rogue in Final Fantasy, which turns into ninja. <coughs> Um, and it's nothing like a World of Warcraft. No, it, it, it isn't. No, I, I like I barely ever use my hide ability, which I probably should more often, honestly. Um, but it's really it's it's super fun. I, I played I've dabbled in a few other classes and I still can't I can't compare like they, they're all like ninja is the most fun to me because I think it's it is literally the fastest or one of the top two fastest classes uh, as far as your global cooldowns and all that kind of stuff. How often you're you're doing your There's abilities. No, like, and that's something that I really like. That's one of the things that I loved about a Fury Warrior in World of Warcraft is Fury Warriors were fast, you know. And so I like being fast. Because you got to go fast. got to go fast. Um, <laughs> but anywho, so what is your – so your, are, have you played anything else besides Summoner? Have you dabbled in any other classes in Final Fantasy? Um, my first character, which still is – sitting waiting for me to go get the job stone for bard <coughs> oh, okay um and i also do have a couple other characters one that's a paladin over on moogle with uh gareth's free company actually mm-hmm. nice sweet and uh i also have a 
little baby white mage, well, conjurer uh, with a couple real life friends that I really need to get back around to go. playing. Some. <laughs> oh yeah. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, um, but out of all of those, you still stuck with like summoner being your favorite one. Yeah, it's it's probably mostly because it just has the most time put into it at this point. But mm -hmm. I do plan on getting to Omni 90 before I make a firm, okay, this is truly my main uh, decision. <laughs> that sounds very <laughs> fair. That is, that I is, yeah. will never do that. <laughs> I, can't, I can't play healer classes. I think that's the biggest problem with me being an Omni, you know, like doing the Omni 90s and all that stuff is because healer does not appeal to me in any way like it, tanks i definitely can do and see I'm, now tanks are the ones that i may have trouble with because i have real tank anxiety yeah mm. tanking is <clears throat> have you tried to tank in uh final fantasy um only at like the lowest level dungeons so far like uh so it's a lot different uh it's easier to get into yeah, it, I feel like. it, yeah it's a lot different than a lot of other mmos for sure <laughs> but it's it's a lot of fun though. I, I really like my Dark Knight. Um but I think that I would I would have all of my melee like DPS classes leveled because and then and then like the tanks and then casters, but I just don't know if I would ever be able to get to healer because I don't like healing at all. <laughs> so I don't know. It's I don't think that I'd ever be able to be an Omni, but I love the fact that you can even do that coming especially coming from years and years of world of warcraft that you don't have to make an alternate character you don't have to make an alt just to be able to play all the classes yeah that that was honestly one of the big appeals for me like oh i just have to change my clothes to change my job yeah I'll take that. <laughs> i mean if you think about it in real life that's essentially what you gotta do <laughs> you just change your clothes right jen you just change your clothes to to, to change your job when I was a custodian, I wore the custodian uniform. And that now you just you I wear just a streamer wear, uniform. You wear a t-shirt. No, I don't shirt. I don't wear the streamer uniform. My hair is natural colored. Mm. It's not <laughs> It's because we're old and that stuff is the spins. Hey, you have hair, so you're you're <laughs> <up ahead there. laughs> Oh snap, that's uh funny. so in your time so how uh, altogether how long have you been playing Final Fantasy then? Final um, Fantasy Final Fantasy fourteen, I should say. Uh, Final Fantasy XIV, um, on and off, mostly on since last February. Okay. So within uh, your time in uh, Final Fantasy XIV, um, what what do you think is probably one of your favorite, favorite memories of, like, something that had happened, if, whether it was story or whether it was with your, you know, playing with friends and all that kind of stuff? Uh, what would you say was your, one of your favorite, more, favorite memories? So this comes from years of wow pug trauma. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but um, when I was going through MSQ, um, there was, um, uh, I think, uh, Thousand Moss, where, mm -hmm. a as a summoner, I accidentally pulled the boss. <laughs> okay. So, you know, I go, I apologize, and instead of, you know... <clears throat> the epic rage gamer moment you expect it's oh you're cool yeah it's fine <laughs> like, like you're it, good just 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 that alone was like <laughs> wow that's kind of that's it's kind of like sad the... it makes you a little bit sad that that just common courtesy is something that because of years of having people shit all over you for doing something you know making a simple mistake uh, and, and we, we totally understand that I've dealt with it like so bad, especially not playing a tank, you know, like you have to deal with people giving you shit if you accidentally pull, but in final fantasy, I don't think that I've ever, there has been a few times where we've had people just give us shit in pugs because mainly because it's like whenever we're doing story dungeons for the first time. And there are people who are max level and they're running those story dungeons on farm. Those people are like, I want to get through this as fast as possible. And you are like, I want to learn. I want to learn about, you know, the 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 story. I'm I'm yeah. I'm experiencing this for the first time. And it's a big difference between Final Fantasy and World of Warcraft is that like everybody in the community always says, go into story dungeons, go into dungeons blind for the first time. In World of Warcraft, you're almost expected to watch videos 
It's like yeah. get on YouTube, watch videos, know the fights so that we're nobody else is having to pull your weight. And in Final Fantasy 14, they're just like, don't watch videos because there's story spoilers. Experience it for the first time running through it. And then, you know, which is normally fine. But then sometimes people are just like annoyed because they just they want to get through it. They don't want to wipe on bosses, you know. But, yeah, but let the, let the sprouts watch the cutscenes. It's not that long. Yeah, yeah, they aren't really that. It's just like a fly through. It's not even that big of a deal. Like there's very short cutscenes in the dungeons where it's just like just let them watch them. It's fine. Um, in chat, um, it was mentioned about PvP. Like, is there PvP rage in Final Fantasy? I think that at any competitive I... level, yes, there will always be some kind of rage. Have you PvP? I've in... heard... I personally haven't PvP no. yet, uh, in Final Fantasy yet. I'm actually waiting for 6.1 with the new mode. Mm -hmm. Did you PvP a lot in World of Warcraft? Um, uh, back in my first go around, I did. Um, and then I tried once, and I got Warsong Gulch in the you know party finder, and said, you know what? No, I, I don't need <laughs> Warsong Gulch in my life anymore. Thanks. <laughs> and then you never PvP again. And yeah. that's where it left. I don't think that there. I think it's the same way. I think that um, PvP is a little bit more laid back uh, than than other MMOs. In in, but in Final like, Fantasy like we said, you're always going to come across that jerk, right? Yep. No matter PvP PVE, like you're always going to come across that one. Well, person. people are yeah, and we we you always have to deal with people who get upset in PvP when it's like they're they're making calls or whatever in the chat, and people aren't doing that stuff, you know. And it's hard to just jump into a group and then everyone listen to one person whoever is making calls you know especially when multiple other people are like let's go this way and then everybody somebody's like go this way you're like who are you supposed to listen to so in final fantasy i feel like the we do uh what is it front front they're line? talking about it yeah front lines seem to be fine i don't know about feast i think people only do front lines for leveling though we do Eric and i try to do the front lines for leveling da daily yeah and it, and it really is just one of those things where you jump into it you fight stuff, you try to capture points, and then you end it. Like, I don't feel like there's it, people who are really, really, like, super taking Frontline seriously. Uh, there's so many people involved in it also. Yeah, and there's it's, it's a pretty big one. That's one of the reasons that I like uh, Frontline as PvP is because it's so big that people can't blame me for sucking. <laughs> and on top of that, everyone's just there for the roulette. So, I mean, nobody's yeah. going to... Uh, nobody's going to be holding a grudge. Right. Yeah, pretty much. And I have never liked PvP, even World of Warcraft. I haven't been a big PvP person. Jen enjoyed PvP more than I did. Um, so I stay away from it mostly. Uh, but I honestly do think that I am a little excited about the new mode that's coming uh, to Final Fantasy because I think that one of the biggest things that Final Fantasy fourteen lacks is PvP. And I think there is a huge audience for it and people who want it. So I think if they start working on making more PP, PvP content. I was going to say PPP. PvP um, content. <laughs> PvP content. If they start making more PvP content and making it more appealing and, and in a way more competitive, uh, yeah. then it's going to draw a whole Different. new audience. You know? Because yeah. there have been... I've known people who you know, decided to stop playing World of Warcraft and came over to Final Fantasy and are like, yeah, it's all cutscenes and crappy PvP. And it's like, if you're into pvp i understand why you would come and play this game and be like i'm watching a movie that is you know i wonder if anybody's sorry i'm i'm, I'm totally going on a tangent i wonder if anybody's put together the amount of time msq cutscenes take up they it's have they lot. have they do every <laughs> expansion so, like, I, th so somebody's, I'm, I'm sure, sure that they, somebody they, has done that math, yeah. I'm pretty sure that they had said that uh, In Walker was like, I don't remember if it was 40 or 60 hours of cutscenes. Just cutscenes. Just, just cutscenes, not running from one place to the other. Jesus. I don't remember who it was. Yeah, somebody <laughs> is, I don't know, if it was you in chat, let us know, or if I, anybody knows that. Yeah. I mean, Yoshi P did tell us that it was basically another JRPG on top of what was already oh, there. Yeah. Wow. So 40 to 60 hours of cutscenes seems in line with that. Yeah. Sounds about right. Um, 
so you you said that you uh, are in Shadowbringers so far. What did you think of the first three expansions before, or the base game in the first two expansions before you got to this current expansion, Shadowbringers, that you're in? ARR, I actually had more fun with than y people will give it credit for. Mm -hmm. Like, the thing is, it's setting up everything else. Like, mm -hmm. they're setting up why it needed to go down, why 1.0 was... Uh, wiped from the board so to speak <laughs> yeah um but i all three have had fantastic storytelling um stormblood probably is the lower of the three um, in my opinion yep um but that's just because it didn't feel like where it was supposed to go mm -hmm. yeah something about stormblood just felt it felt like a like a, a smaller story in scale of like in in the scale of like, you know, I don't know the intensity. It, and you and you think about it, I guess if you compare it to like say Heaven's Ward, Heaven's Ward was great, but Heaven's Ward was focused on the Dragon Song War, which is very isolated to that section of you know, of the map. So it's kind of it wasn't until, I guess Shadowbringers that we got to this global, huge threatening thing, you know. Um, which you're dealing with right now. Um, so, but I guess out of, out of the, those three, would you, which one do you say was your most enjoyable experience, uh, as far as story goes? In terms of how big of a field strip it was, heavens were. Yeah, hands down. <laughs> that's very true. <laughs> uh, the one that made me feel the most emotions. So, but yeah, I agree with what you were saying about A Realm Reborn as well, uh, is people often, they, people often give it crap because, it is a slog at times, but the thing is, you could sit here and say that Heaven's Ward is amazing, Shadowbringers is amazing, or even Inwalker is amazing, and A Realm Reborn sucked because it was so boring and there was it was so long. But it wasn't boring. It it, it just it, it it had more world building. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, and well, the the things the things that made Heaven's Ward and Shadowbringers and Inwalker all amazing would not mean anything to you if you didn't play a realm or born yeah those seeds were planted yeah exactly so it's like that whole you know moment where it's just like oh that is this person it's like yeah that stuff is stuff that you learned in previous expansions in the expansions that everybody says are so boring you wouldn't have known it if you didn't go through that so it's kind of like you you have to get all of the knowledge because it's it's not based here in our reality where we just have lived our lives and experienced things and have learned them naturally. Like you're being thrown yeah, it, into it, a new world. It's like reading the first book of wheel of time or any epic fantasy series. It's, it may feel slower. The action's going to pick up, mm -hmm. but without the setting building, it, it just doesn't have the same impact. Exactly. Yeah, my mom was watching. I don't remember what it was. She was watching something recently, and I was like, remember, "Book of Boba Fett." But oh yeah, I was like, "Remember, it takes it about you know." Like, we haven't seen it, but I'm like, "Remember, most things that are going to be like awesome, it takes it a little bit to pick give up. It a, give it one or two episodes before it gets we're enjoying it the crap out of Wheel of Time. So, yeah. Um, the season ended, right? Yes, we watched the season finale recently. Uh, have you, Shanti? Have you have you watched it at all? Yes, and I gotta say, I'm generally a fan of the changes from the book series, what they've added, what they've taken away. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's good. Yeah, because, I mean, we, we haven't read the book, so we're going into it like 100% just experiencing it through the show. Um, <clears throat> but we really like it a lot. We're, we're, we're having a great time with it. Yeah. And I'm excited for the next season. Um, yeah, I have some moments I'm waiting for, like uh, going back to Game of Thrones waiting for that red wedding reaction from your friends <laughs> i have some i have some moments like that that i'm waiting for in real time nice awesome. nice that's Great. awesome <laughs> super happy that we know that something like that is coming <laughs> not exactly like that but you'll <laughs> you'll see it explode on social media when it gets there oh yeah like most things we really should walk watch book of boba fett because <clears throat> we haven't started and i know that there's going to be spoilers. like spoilers with that crap um, True. I just hate it because I have to be in a mood for something. Like, there's so many shows. Like, we we just recently finished uh, Snowpiercer, the first and second season of the Snowpiercer series, and um, I hadn't. We, I, I mean, it's been around for a while, but we hadn't watched it because I just was never in the mood to start watching it. And I just randomly was like, you know what, I'm gonna start watching the show. And 
we freaking loved it. It's great. It's awesome. I'm super looking forward to the next season. Uh, <clears throat> I think they did an awesome job with it. But it's like with shows that are as big and popular as as the Book of Boba Fett, you really just kind of have to watch it while everybody else is, or else you're gonna get it spoiled. So or just not care about spoilers. So those are your two options. Or just not care about spoilers, which personally I I do care about spoilers and stuff like with um with like Final Fantasy 14 because I feel like things are more poignant whenever you experience them in the, in the moment and also because our community likes to see us experiencing them in the moment that's why we only do uh MSQ on stream. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, we have so much, so many, like, keywords, uh, blocked on Twitter right now. Oh, yeah, we so do. So there's probably a ton of posts that we have not seen over the last, like, month and a half. <clears throat> We've actually, um, unfortunately, and if you're one of these people, I apologize, uh, we muted a bunch of accounts on Twitter recently because there were people who were posting stuff that weren't. 100% spoilers, but it was like screenshots of their characters in a zone that we haven't been to, or... <clears throat> oh, soft spoilers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And because of that, we're just like, you know, I know that they weren't intending, they just wanted to share their love for something, you know. Uh, people sharing the screenshot of their character in the very last, like at the end of Endwalker, there's this one screenshot that I've seen of people's characters, mm -hmm. and... Just that screenshot in itself was, like, upsetting to me, so I would, like, mute those accounts. And once we finally get through all of Endwalker, we're going to, un like, I'm going to go through all these muted accounts and start unmuting stuff. But well, at least you know my account is safe from spoilers for you. <laughs> That's true, yeah. <laughs> and we do plan on, like, going back and, like, unmuting, a, like, yeah, the yeah. majority of those and taking off those keywords. I'm yeah, hoping exactly. that will be done with MSQ by the end of January is the... Fingers crossed plan. Yeah, hopefully. It, it's funny because we were, we're going to be doing a podcast uh, here in a few months, which they haven't announced it yet, so we're not going to exactly give details and everything. But we're going to be on a podcast here like in February, I think. And um, I told them they were like, oh, you know, we're going to we should be have uh, some information about the next patch by then. So we can talk about that on this on the on the podcast. And I was like, Hopefully we'll be done with MSQ I by then, but I can't guarantee you that we will, we will because we're going real slow. We are it going on. slow, but that's okay. Because one, we only do it on on stream, and two, we're very chatty. I and I, I guess I should change change that. I'm very chatty. I like <laughs> I like to talk to chat about the most random shit. So yeah, it's... And, and there's and there's nothing wrong with savoring the experience. <clears throat> oh no. yeah, for sure. Because you're only gonna go through it once, right? Like. You're only going to go through that story one time for the first time. Yeah, exactly. Um, so besides Final Fantasy uh, Final Fantasy games and Final Fantasy fourteen, are there any other uh, video games that you really enjoy? Um, the Persona series after Persona 3 up to Persona 5 Strikers. Um, nice. Let's see. Um, I, I, I have finally forgiven Elder Scrolls and I might try Skyrim soon. <laughs> <laughs> so you've never played Skyrim? Nope. Wow. Oh, 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 obliv the Oblivion grudge was real. Wow. They tried to sell it to you so many times, too, and you haven't played it. I've... No, I, I've saved like $200, $300 just from not <laughs> wanting to buy all the editions. Yeah, just nice. from not buying Skyrim nice. five times. Wow. Uh, that's cool. I'm actually, yeah, that's, that's kind of exciting because I enjoyed the shit out of Skyrim. I played Morrowind, uh, Oblivion. And Skyrim, and and I think that Morrowind I really liked. Oblivion I was like meh about, and then Skyrim I really liked as well. So, uh, yeah, I think that that's pretty cool. And you also get to play like the special edition or whatever that you know has slightly better looking textures and all that kind of stuff. And fishing, which they just added to the uh, 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 old game, um, so that's cool. Oh, that fishing cost you fifty dollars, <laughs> didn't it? No, oh, I did not. I have not bought that version. I have not bought the fishing version. <laughs> I bought the last time I bought it was when it came out on Switch, and I was like, the idea of me being able to play through Skyrim anywhere I want was like really a, a selling point, even though we're in the middle of a pandemic and I can't <laughs> go anywhere. I know it's like still I have the option. That's all that matters. Uh, so I'm actually yeah, I, at... I have this huge board game collection that hasn't seen use in oh. two years because well, same. 
Yeah. Yep. We've yeah, got a we've got a, a closet full of board games and a D and D group that hasn't met in like two years. <laughs> so we definitely want to be. And now with you know the new variant or whatever, it's getting to the point where we're like, well, we're not going to go anywhere again. So because we were getting to that point where like getting ready, like let's you know let's start contacting the friends. Let's let's you know Avengers assemble for D and D. Um, and now we're like. Maybe not the best idea. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe not. Yeah. Not right now. But I know that you could do it virtually and everything, but I've always just. It, 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 it's not the same. Yeah. There's something about sitting around a table with all of your friends, you know, drinking drinks and eating snacks and playing D&D that's, that's hard to uh, emulate on. And, <laughs> and the beautiful rattle of the and the beautiful rattle of the dice. Yes, of mm -hmm. course. That even then, when we were playing, when we do play, we have played virtually. I still roll physical dice. I'm like, get out of here with those digital dice. You know, I, I still haven't hit, I haven't hit anybody with dice in years. Well, what, well, it's funny because one of the uh, Jen bought me dice for Christmas this year. I bought her two sets of dice for Christmas, and I got a set. And you got a set from uh, Miss Fiasco. Fiasco sent you a set of dice. So we've got, got so many dice, new dice. dice sets. And I got like the metal uh, dwarven dice that I've been wanting for a very long time. I get very excited when I roll dice, awesome. and I've uh, rolled the dice so hard that it hit the table multiple times, and then hit somebody. One time in a session. She was funny a story. Funny story about that, Jen. I had a friend who would roll his dice and they would bounce off me. And every time they'd bounce off me, he'd get his natural <laughs> 20, his max damage. Dang, you're, so the, lucky, it, you're the lucky one. It, yeah, no, if, if I could roll above a five, that'd be great, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm it got to a point where he was actually just aiming at you from then on, right? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I'm the same as Eric when we were doing. Ooh. Like when we were live streaming, like D and D and stuff like that, like I would physically roll my dice. And well, so that one time, like Jen was about to do something in game that she just was super excited about. She thought that it was the coolest thing, so she got really excited, and she was just like, "Yeah!" And then she like rolled her d twenty, and it hit the mat and like flew mm -hmm. across the table and smacked one of the other players in the face. Yeah, my bad. I'm sorry. And it wasn't a metal well, dice, though. Luckily. Yeah, I didn't hurt them or anything. They were just laughing. So I have a question for you. What was your most unique D and D character? Huh. That's a that's an that's an interesting question. So I usually I DM. Was a manic pixie. That's true. That was a pretty good one. I I usually DM, so I I don't often play. Um, I don't often play a variety of characters. I usually, if I have the opportunity to play a character, I play dwarf. <laughs> My dwarf, like pretty much every opportunity I get to play dwarf, I play him in D and D. Um, but actually, our two characters from that one shot that we did, Jin, she that's talked a, like this. That's a good I'm example. Jin played like a a crazy pixie. Like she just was, she wanted to stab everybody, and she was just like, yeah, she was like, get out of here. Like, but she I'm was, pretty sure I was still a healer. You were a healer, but you would. She wanted to like stab everybody, and I played an orc cowboy. Like I was, yeah. We went crazy. Yeah, I I played a I played an orc that was like, well, we gotta get out of here now, y'all. Like it was this freaking orc cowboy. What mine, about you? Mine was a ninety nine year old kobold okay. who was convinced he was actually dragonborn <laughs> because he lived to be ninety nine throughout all of the adventure ra adventurers rating, and you know kobolds they don't have a long lifespan really. Yeah, well. In uh, don't they don't kobolds turn into dragons as they age? Like if they get old enough, they event they eventually turn into a dragon, don't they? Well, that, that's how it worked uh, for uh, the campaign I was in, anyway. Oh, okay. Um, which was actually, funnily enough, a Final Fantasy D and D campaign. Oh. So he was a, you know, just this grumpy old kobold <laughs> who was a dragoon. Wow! Convinced he was Dragonborn. That's really cool. that's awesome. I love playing. I love playing elderly characters. Uh, like so. I mean, Dorf is usually one hundred seventy, two hundred years old, or something like yeah, that. But, but that's not elderly. Him, like, yeah, age, that's right? not elderly for a dwarf. Yeah, that, that, that's that's in dwarven prime. Yeah, exactly. 
Uh, but I usually, when I, I like to play, like I have played in the past for like one shots and stuff, like a human character that's like 70, like 75, you know? And so he's like this old grizzled warrior that could that could barely do anything, but he still has, on paper, he's got these abilities. So uh, I could still pull off these really awesome stuff, and it's just really cool to <laughs> just think of like, hey, you better get out of here, or I'm going to pop you one. And then this freaking warrior goes flipping through the air. The fighter just does these like flips and brings an axe down on a guy's face, and you're just like, what the hell? I didn't expect that to happen. <laughs> Yeah, and I actually chose the age for that uh, kobold by rolling percentile dice. Wow. <laughs> and just happened to be 99. I know. I was like, that's like getting a D20. Dang. So have you ever done any like RP stuff in any MMOs at all? Um, I haven't, but I'm probably going to look more into it, especially in Final Fantasy. It just, yeah. it feel with the better glamour system, the... Uh, the housing and all that the housing i mean the nightclubs the, yeah. all, all, all of these options have you started so have you started to come up with like thoughts and like uh ideas of like a backstory for your warrior of light um given that you know the current warrior of light is a summoner and therefore also a scholar um they they were in their youth a bookish nerd mm -hmm. who just happen to have the echo bestowed upon them nice so right. that that's like that that's the seed but I, yeah I, I've, I've obviously got more work yeah. to go on the story yet yeah um, like we had whole character arcs and and stories and everything for our characters in uh world of warcraft but i honestly don't think that we put a lot of in of of thought and everything into um our warriors of light mainly because we Fantasia too much. <laughs> you know, it's hard to it's hard to put down like to make a story for your character, and it's just like, oh, he was a Lollafell who thought he was a dwarf, and I'm like, oh, you're here. Uh, never mind. <laughs> I have to change the story again. Well, so, you would have to have something that. Yeah, how would you do that? I just need to make a different story for each one. It's like, oh, if I'm a if I'm a Hrothgar, then this is my backstory. If I'm a uh, here, then this is my backstory. Better um, get that bun boy uh, backstory. Oh ready. God, no! Don't do it to me. <laughs> Your community's gonna get you there, and you know it. I really, <laughs> I don't have a problem with people who play bun boys. By the way, I think Cass was the one that had posted on 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 Twitter and was like, "Eric hates bun boys," and I was like, "Listen, I need you to understand. I don't want to play a bun boy. I think that they are my least favorite of the races available in Final Fantasy XIV, but." I don't hate people who play them. The, the community just likes. I just, just like don't to like them. I just see, don't. Now, want and, to. and in my opinion, here are the most boring of the races. Well, I'm see, already a, I'm already a human. I don't need to play a game to be a human. But see, I I look at that in a different way, and I, I feel like a lot of people do the same thing. I am a human, so I want to play a human in the game, so it puts me into that world. And I respect that. That that's perfectly fine. It's just not my personal style. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, if they if I could play a dwarf, I mean, obviously I would play a dwarf. <laughs> so it's there is a, there is a difference there. And uh, like my Hrothgar was cool as shit. Like I really liked being a Hrothgar, but I I just I I was you know nostalgic for my hero. Who who knows? I I might you know if if the community doesn't make me go bun boy i might be able to i have two extra fantasias so i might be able to go back cass said i mean you did make a pretend church against bun boy <laughs> <laughs> i was warning about the you know people falling for the he was warning he pressure. was warning about the evils of fantasia yeah the evils of fantasia after i just recently fantasia from a hrothgar to a here uh now now, now a fantasia free eco-friendly bun boy is perfectly fine exactly <laughs> if you created your character as a bun boy that's that's fine you know um <laughs> but yeah i don't know i because I, I really enjoyed being a lala but only because i was like I could pretend to be a dwarf if there was a way that I could just just give me more gear for like a different variety of gear from the dwarves in the game and I'd be good. I'd be down for that. Oh, that's interesting. Here, male is the second most popular race gender. What? That's crazy. Do you think it's because they want to look like the... The, the uh, meteor? Yeah. Warrior light? I mean, 
Maybe. That's really weird. To that's a really weird statistic. Cure male you is know, the her Hrothgar. I no way. am very excited to see even like just concept art of what they want them to look like. Yeah, that's gonna I, be pretty cool. I hope they do them good. See if it, that's another thing. If if they come out with the the Fem Hrothgar and they look cool, I might me and Jen might both go Hrothgar again. You know, because I did like my Hrothgar. You know what? It's always up in the air. You what? never know what month in what month what race Jen and Eric will be. <laughs> Uh, especially, especially if there's community goals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Shanti, what race do you play in? I don't, I don't know if I, if I asked. Okay, so I have four characters, right? Wow. Okay, okay. I have, I have my scaly boy. He's my, he's my uh, summoner. Okay. I have, I have my cat boy. That's the one that I first started with. That's my bard. Well, okay. almost bard. <laughs> uh, my healer is a, is a Lala. Uh huh. And then um, I recently uh, rolled so I could play on Primal with people, um, a Bun Boy. Ah, okay. Nice. I, I do have alts, but I don't ever play them. Like, I made a Hrothgar at one point that I just don't ever play. But um, When you're rolling, is your, is your Bun Boy uh, the tallest or the shortest? Um, he is the shortest with the longest ears. Okay. <laughs> so maybe still okay. as tall as the tallest. He just that's the longest ears. He makes up for his his height and ears. <laughs> um. Okay. So, do you have any? So you you talked about D and D a little bit and board games. Um. Do you have any other hobbies besides that, outside of Final Fantasy fourteen D and D board games that kind of stuff? Uh. Well, prior to the plague, I made it to the Bristol Ren Fair every year for twenty years. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, God, I miss Ren Faire. So when was the last time you'd been to a Ren Faire then? 2019. 2019, I think. Same. Same, yeah. I think that's when the last time we went We were well. supposed to go in 2020, and we didn't. We didn't go this last year either. We... We were talking about this going. We usually go for our... Air, yeah, so we, we usually go, go for March, our birthdays and that's getting in March. very close. <clears throat> that's getting very now. close, and... Things are not. Yeah, and it's unfortunate great. for me because I would love to go to the Ren Fair on my birthday, but the closest I ever get is the week before. Mm. Yeah, we're usually we usually go to Ren Fair on the week in between our birthdays because Jen and I uh, our birthdays are ten days apart, so we usually just go on the weekend in between. So it's like for both of our birthday cel- celebration. Yeah. Um, but uh, so so when you go to Ren Fair, you garb it up. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Nice. You got to You got to garb it up. I think it's funny that I kind of I should try to find those pictures. We have pictures of the first time Jen and I went to Ren Fair together, and we like threw together these really crappy like costumes. Like mine was just like a cloak, and I don't know. I don't know. I made a homemade tunic or something, and then Jen had a Halloween costume that she had turned into a frost mage outfit. Yeah, it was a. It was a, like a reaper. death reaper. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it 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 looked it looked okay, but you could tell that it was just like a homemade like altered Halloween costume, pretty much. Uh, and then we started buying garb, and now we have full sets of of awesome garb that we wear, uh, which is actually what I use for my dwarf cosplay, and Jen uses for her her uh, her cosplay as well. Um, we have like I use the tunic and the undershirt and everything from my garb, um, and then we also bought garb for when we had lost weight and we were thinner, and now we don't fit into that garb anymore because we've gained <laughs> weight back. So something to aim for. <laughs> um, but we're lucky that in here in Texas we have we have three different um, Ren fairs, but we've only gone to two of them. There's one of them, the Scarborough Fair, that happens in the middle of the summer, and a Ren Fair in the middle of the summer in Texas is horrible. <laughs> Garbro is typically early summer. Uh, I would I would want to say April, May, maybe mm-hmm. into June. Yeah, because so. a lot of the performers that are at Scarborough come up to Bristol when it opens. So yeah, yeah cuz well, so uh sure we're... because <laughs> because uh Wisconsin slash Illinois border summer better than Texas summer for all that. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine. Yeah, what we when we go in March, we go because I think March, February and March, or is it? I think it's February and March. February and March is when Sherwood Forest Fair 
is open, which is the one that is in Austin, which is probably our favorite one because it's kind of our home Ren Faire. Yeah. And uh, it's it's actually, you know, nice weather. You could wear cloaks and stuff. But Scarborough is, is we by the time. We haven't gone because we know. It's I got hot. a heat stroke at TRF in TRF October. In October, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and then TRF is Texas Renaissance Festival, which is the biggest one in Texas, one of the biggest ones in the U.S. Um, and we really like that one, but I don't know. I think I, I prefer the smaller intimacy, I guess, in a sense, of, of Sherwood Forest Fair. Uh, also, I feel like Sherwood is, is takes place in a more wooded area, which I, I, yeah, that's I, true. I, I still I like that a lot. Um, so, yeah, Sherwood, Sherwood is a lot of fun. I really hope that we can go to a Ren fair again soon but you know it all depends on the state of the shit that's happening yeah my, my local fair was <laughs> my local fair was closed throughout 2020 because obviously they were and then and then i saw pictures of the first few weekends in 2021 and there just weren't enough people wearing masks and i and i just i me and my wife talked it over and said you know what we can't we can't risk it yep right i mean we were in texas so yeah it's the no one wears masks here <laughs> so that's it's just one of those things where you know i i almost want to just like tell the people when i see them wearing masks here in texas i just i almost just want to tell them thank you <laughs> every time Bless you. because because it's not as common as you would hope it's not like we go to we we we'd go to the store or something and you'd see i would say that probably 20 percent of the people that are there shopping are wearing masks and everybody else isn't oh, you so when 20 percent Maybe less. So when you see somebody who is wearing a mask, well, you just want to just be like, you know, like give them the thumbs up. Yeah, good job. Good job. Uh, America, yeah. Um, so anything else besides that? Uh, any other hobbies besides going to rent fairs? I've actually, and I'm going to be opening up commissions for this soon, but oh. I actually started uh, recently in the past year writing a uh, folk song. I, I want to say, I'm going to call it, parodies in quotes of uh sea shanties and other ren fair style music oh that's cool that's that awesome. awesome yeah i actually i wrote a uh variation of the of the wellerman song for twitch streaming that we still have not made a tiktok Do you for. have that written down i i recorded it i have the whole recorded song no, do you have it written down for us? No, a no, I don't have it written down. But it's like, yeah, it's it's the Wellerman, like, you know, melody and everything, but it's talking about, like, this is, you know, my stream, come follow me on my stream or whatever for TikTok. Um, now, my Wellerman version is actually going to be from uh, the Sahagan point of view, and it's soon may Leviathan come. Oh, nice. I like that. <laughs> That's awesome. That's really cool. Yeah, uh, uh, Jay the Bard contacted me a while back about doing a uh, – a dwarven version of the Wellerman song, I think. Um, but he's gotten super busy lately. Uh, he just got partnered and everything, which was freaking cool. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, he's been really busy. So maybe one day we'll we'll be able to get around to doing that. That'd be that'd be pretty awesome. But um, yeah, that's that's really cool. Um, and my voice, I see a request in chat. My voice really is not up to singing at the moment. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but you do like to sing. Yes, and oh. okay, occasionally you will see it on my stream. As oh, a matter of fact, so fun. far I think just about the only clip of me is singing uh, a storm song, Laddie. Uh, so if you want oh, to go check that nice. out, <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Um, it, it's funny because we Jen just recently came up with the idea that if we do, uh, if we get our sub goal every stream, that I would sing a song. And so today was the first time I've had to do that. So I'm like, after singing that song, I sang Jolene by Dolly Parton. After singing that song, I was like, man, I need to make sure that I'm practicing off stream now. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm a little rusty. And even so, I, I I don't know if you saw me say it in chat, but making your guests follow that follow that up, that that's not cool. <laughs> well, oh. the idea is like I wanted to give, like, I'm like, we have these like daily like uh like sub goals but like we're not doing anything to celebrate them right so i was like eric used to, especially on mixer eric used to sing all the time we had a channel points redemption where you could spend channel points and then you can choose a song of a list of tabs yeah. that i have and be like sing this song but because of dmca we've been a lot more worried about it and stuff but i think that i, I don't i, I don't think, think that live performances are not really 
They're not dinged as often. They're not, yeah, they're not getting, you know, getting dinged and stuff like that for doing a, a live cover of it on your stream. So we've been a little bit more, like, like more, ex more, more open to doing it. So, um, okay. Yeah, and that's that's one of the reasons that I stick to Ren Fair music. I'm mm. not gonna see a DMCA strike from that. Yeah, sure, yeah, sure, that's sure. true. Um, so every episode, every time we have a guest on, we like to ask one question to them, and that question is. <gasps> If you can change anything in Final Fantasy XIV, what would it be? So, I'm going to cheat here a little and give you two. Okay. Okay. One, um, all housing should be the uh, lottery system. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Because you see those people that have half of a ward map owned by themselves. Yeah under the guise of free company housing. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'd like that to change a little. And then yeah. the second is that I would like the glamour system to steal from WoW and just give us a collection tab, not have to have a, a whole glamour dresser that you need to keep it in your, in your inventory. And oh. yeah, that's like when you receive an item, it goes into a collection rather than you having to, Keep take it and put it in there and I yeah get you. so it would be more like a it. catalog exactly that makes yeah I, I actually i feel like they could do that yeah i mean world of warcraft i mean it. i guess in my mind I, I guess i was thinking more like i don't know like lore wise like you could be like oh you took it to the the cloth or clother and it, like you learned how to make that item and now you can sure you know what i mean yeah yeah i mean it I, it is i don't it yeah. doesn't even really need explanation, doesn't need honestly. An explanation. Uh, it's just <clears throat> yeah, that would that would make it a lot easier because I tend to do that. Like I've got so much stuff in my armory, like well, that. You can only have X amount. Also. Yeah, you can only have X amount of items in your armory, and I've got so much in there, and I'm just like, uh, I have to. It comes a time when it starts to get full where you have to be like, all right, it's time to sit here and go through each item. I did that last week, and you know how long and it took me? And that's when you start working on one type of job to clear up that one type of job <laughs> yeah. clutter. It took it took me two hours to go through all that stuff. Well, and then on, on top of that... Because the... then I also had to decide... Well, I had to un-glamour That's what I was going to say. ...to figure out if I wanted to keep I it or not. I hate that. I hate that it sits there, and it's like you try on an item, and it shows you what that item looks like glammed. Like there's there's they need to make it either so it doesn't show you what that item looks like. It just when you click try on, it doesn't show you the glam version. It shows you the actual regular version or it Which allows you options. to just see what it looks like without the glam, you know, because right. that makes it so annoying trying to put stuff into your glamour chest. And you're like, oh, uh, maybe I want to add this. And you right click on it and you see the what it's glammed to and not what it actually is. <laughs> yeah. And then you look at it died, and you're like, what was I thinking at all? <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but anywho, yeah, those are those are good suggestions. Like um, but thank you so much for coming on to the show. Yeah. Uh, we really appreciate yes. it. Yeah, thank you for having me. I, I, love, I love talking video games, so I've been seeking out opportunities like this. Yeah. Well, we're, we are glad to have you. And uh, So where can our community and everybody who's listening, where can they find you at? So you can find me at uh, Shantyman Gaming on Twitter, on Twitch, and on TikTok. Nice. So uh, do you do you do like uh, Shanty TikToks? Uh, yes. Uh, I'm o I only have one up so far. Um, it's from my uh, raiding Shanty. One more raid. Uh huh. Sweet. Awesome. awesome. Uh, I'm definitely gonna go but check there, this out. There will be more soon. Sweet. That's great. That is um, awesome. Yeah, so uh, chat, you guys can click on that link, uh, twitch.tv slash shantymangaming, and then also shantymangaming pretty much everywhere else. Um, thank you so much. We, we're, we're very happy to have you. Uh, thanks, chat, for hanging out with us. We will see you all very soon. Jen's going to give a raid if you guys want to stick around on stream, those of you who are hanging out. Um, but, yeah, uh, we, we love you guys. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, and we will see you guys very soon. Bye. Thanks so much for listening. 
Generic End Talkers is recorded live on twitch.tv slash generic live, where Jen and Eric also stream a lot of Final Fantasy XIV, as well as a few other games. And as always, keep your forge hot and your ale cold.